Welcome back, super friends and super family. I am Thor, your friendly neighborhood god of thunder, and today I'm reacting to Friends, season two, episodes 19 and 20. Such a great season so far. So many memorable episodes, and I think that I'm excited as we're nearing the end of this season. I mean, it's crazy that I'm, I, I guess not quite nearing the end, but like six, I think there's six episodes left. And it is crazy how quickly it's going by, but I'm also really, really enjoying myself. I mean, I can honestly say uh, I think that recording these friends reactions is easily my favorite type of reaction to do. It just, it feels different. It feels a little bit more relaxed. I'm laughing so much. It's, uh, you know, f doing these reactions, you really get the appeal of the show uh, completely. You know what I mean? Like it just, it brightens my mood when it's like, what reactions do we have to do today? Oh, friends. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, but thank you. I just want to take this chance to thank all of you. The Friends community seems really cool. Really, just really a bunch of really chill people who love the show, love to laugh, and are really supportive of me. That's very kind of you. I've had so many kind comments and messages from people who are enjoying these reactions and uh you know it feels a bit excessive in a certain sense like i'm just watching a show and having a good time but i do appreciate it it's very kind to everyone who's left those comments or sent me messages you know who you are um thank you that's so cool excited to jump right into it friends season two episodes 19 and 20. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing here? Nothing, Rumi, just watching you sleep. Oh, yeah, that normal thing. This is a horror movie. Peaceful. <clears throat> Please. I can't sleep now. Oh, you, you want me to sing? Uh, <laughs> no. I want you to leave forever. God, I want you out of the apartment now. Oh, what, what are you talking about, man? Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> Better roommate than you. No. I mean, his conversation would be a lot better. Yeah, I mean, well, what about all the other nights when you don't see me, huh? <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Get out now! Okay. Don't piss him off, though. He might be unstable. I want you out. No, no, no. I want to hear it from your lips. <laughs> what? You know what, Pally? I understand. Consider me gone. You know what? I'll be out by the time you get home from work. Come no, on. he won't. No, he won't. He's going to have some weird plan. I heard that. <laughs> Ow. Oh, great. I'm nervous for Chandler. I mean, I know we're in sitcom territory, but jeez. Reason 10,000 to get Joey back. I do like that actor, though. He's so funny as this psychotic roommate. Hey. Nice hat. Nice hat. Finally got that time machine working, huh? <laughs> got his little rascal's cap. This guy was selling him on 8th Avenue, and I looked at him and I thought, you know what I don't have? A mirror? <laughs> <laughs> oh, savage. I mean, it's not like I'm starting from square one. That was Dr. Drake Grimore on Days of Our Lives. That's, that's the right attitude to have. Nice. Cachet, jaunty. Chandler gave me word of the day toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 did you read the book? Oh, my God. What book? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what book is this? Oh. A Stephen King book. Tell me. Be your own windkeeper. Yeah, and, oh, and, but there's, there's wind. <laughs> And the wind can make us goddesses. I'm Rachel right now. Takes our wind? Men. They just take it. <laughs> and just take our wind. Yaha! Oh. <laughs> they are the lightning bearers. Wow! Yeah. This sounds like a fantasy novel almost. Kind of like The Hobbit. <laughs> it is nothing there like The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> Richard would never steal your wind. No. No. Does he give you wind drinking from our pool of inner power but god forbid we should take a sip this does sound like the hobbit now okay this is a typical lightning bearer thing what who wants one of my phallic shaped man cakes <laughs> this is when you study too much freud don't worry about it already things happen so oh more of her yes yes look at me look at me <laughs> Do I have lipstick on my teeth? <laughs> All right. Cab driver number two? Oh, how much does it pay? How can I go from being a neurosurgeon to driving a cab? <laughs> Unless it's taxi driver, you don't want that. Take any job you can get and don't make on the floor. <laughs> Sorry. I think the advice for taking any job is quite good. In this book could have been called Be Your Own Windkeeper, Rachel. <laughs> I don't think it would have 
sold a million copies, but it would have made a nice gift for you. Uh, sweetie, we've got to go. No! What? <laughs> oh, great. When you take self-help too far. We always have to do everything according to your timetable. Actually, it's the movie theater that has the timetable. <laughs> about you stealing my win. You He's understandably girl. lost. I can't pull that off, can I? <laughs> How do you expect me to grow if you won't let me blow? <laughs> you could take that a few different ways. I have a, a problem with that. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Are you right? I don't have to apologize. <laughs> Sorry. Damn it! <laughs> they could pool in it. I mean, I don't really get it, but she's she's pretty upset about it. See, this is why I don't date women who read. <laughs> What's that? It's my visa bill. Oh, great. How much? 500? Oh. How did I spend so much money? Uh, that's just the minimum amount due. That's your total due. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Whoa, whoa, $3,500 at Porcelain Safari? My animals. You spent 3500 on interior decorating? Oh, my gosh. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're driving a cab on another world. <laughs> that audition? That's a two-line talk. Come on, take it. Get the paycheck. Not judgmental and condescending and pedantic. He's a little sensitive. Paper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Ross knew. Like, Joey, you'll be fine, and hang in there, and, and something big's gonna come along, I know. No, that's all, that's BS, that's BS. He's being a friend. $300, that isn't it chromantic? <laughs> Who knows how long it's gonna be till you get another? Look, I don't wanna hear this Look, right I'm, now. Uh, I'm just- It's tough love. You know, maybe, maybe I should just go. Okay. I'll see you later. Oh, Joey, come on, he's trying to be your friend. I was Dr. Drake Ramore. That was huge! <laughs> Sounded like BoJack Horseman now. Ross! You still there? <laughs> Your neighbors were listening. <laughs> Did you bring a weapon? Did you bring a weapon, please? Hey, you are... ah! <laughs> Basic dehydrating of a few fruits and vegetables. Man alive, this thing's fantastic. Okay. Got us a new goldfish. He's a lot feistier than the last one. Oh, uh, an actual goldfish. Do with dehydrating, my man, because right now I'm a dehydrating maniac. <laughs> Just a dehydrating maniac? Do you need that descriptor in front of that? I thought we had a deal. I thought by the time uh, I got... You know what that is? Your last roommate's kidney? <laughs> Definitely goes in the display. <laughs> Just run. Sleep at a hotel for the night, Chandler. Find a new place to live. You had a new identity. Whatever you have to. I was buried in an avalanche. On what show? I used to be Bryce on All My Children. Is that a real show? <laughs> you watched me sleep? No more watching me sleep. No more. He's traumatized. He has PTSD. Give him space. <laughs> that was great. Move out. Take your fruit, your stupid small fruit, and get out. <laughs> Wow. Does he have short-term memory loss? <laughs> I gotta tell you, man, I mean, that's, uh, it's kind of out of the blue. I mean, I think of... Oh, my gosh. Okay. Not out of the blue. This is smack dab in the middle of the blue. <laughs> Bye for my stuff. It's not going to be that easy. But if you think for one second I'm leaving you alone with my fish, you're insane, Jack. You want some help? Mm. No help required. Oh, the poor fish. Worse than the Wolf of Wall Street and Jonah Hill. So, bucks. <laughs> Excuse me, that's 50 bucks. Oh, shoot. Five O dollars. When I was on Days of Our Lives as Dr. Drake Ramore. <laughs> no, don't, don't do this. Hey, just so you know, if you wanted to expand this scene, like, like, have the cab crash. No, 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 don't do this. You're not going to get the role if you act like this. This time of day, you're better off taking the budge. <laughs> You were going for the word bridge there, weren't you? <laughs> I'll have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in that, you know, that mood for a job interview many times. To take your wind, I would have to say no. And I would have to say, paha. 
you like totally let him wash his feet in the pool of your inner power. <laughs> and his puppet too. This is inside baseball. Guy into the forest of my righteous truth on the first date. <laughs> forest of righteous truth. That's what we're calling it. You ever betrayed another goddess for a lightning bearer? Okay, number 30. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we're not allowed to skip questions. <clears throat> not to my recollection. <gasps> The bottle was totally pointing at me. Only because you took up half the circle. <gasps> <laughs> Low blow. <laughs> We're gonna have another fight. <gasps> it's so sad. Oh. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna be going to the goddess meetings alone. <laughs> She's above it all. Slept with Jason Hurley an hour after he broke up with Monica. <laughs> wow, one hour. Leaf blower. <laughs> One hour, oh, oh. <laughs> she smiled, she felt better. Solidarity. That 3D Last Supper, Judas is a little loose. <laughs> I could never do what you do, Joey. Ross is such a good friend, man. Jeez, that's so cool. Respect I have for you not going to that stupid cab driver audition. I went. Great, how'd it go? <laughs> the dream huh all right then <laughs> he's doing his best how much for the uh how much to save the bird twelve hundred dollars you spent that thing cost twelve hundred uh it was an impulse buy it didn't need the register oh joey joey oh my gosh a twelve hundred dollar impulse buy i can't even imagine <laughs> i'll take it my gift to you man Ross, you are so legit, bro. I really like that bird, though. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Here are your cakes. We didn't order cake. It's apology cakes. From me. I love you, goddesses. <laughs> Goddess group hug. Never want to suck your wind again. <laughs> We're good. Uh -huh. We're good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me take these cakes back, because they're going to take that out of my paycheck. Uh, what? <laughs> Young, the psycho's gone. Are you sure? Are you sure, man? I don't know. Let him leave. I mean, that guy is standing in the window holding a human head. He is <laughs> window holding human head. I mean, how are they going to handle this problem? He knows where you live. The mannequin in the alley behind Macy's. <laughs> there is no alley behind Macy's. So I got it in the junior miss department, big diff. Yes, it is. Our next cocktail party. Put chips in it. We'll make it a, like a chip check. What? <laughs> it's a Dahmer party. What are you doing? Eddie, do you remember yesterday? Uh, yes, I think I vaguely recall. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs like this guy. Talking to me yesterday. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps looking at them like he knows them. Took a road trip to Las Vegas, man. Oh, sweet Moses. <laughs> Bucks. Check it out. He buys me these new shoes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, see you upstairs. He should get married to that lady, uh, to Joey's stalker. That's what he should do. Starting to really like him? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yes, right? Yeah. Careful, he might bring a battering ram. May I help you? <laughs> I already have a roommate. Yes, yes, Joey's back to help with the cover story and also save money. Now, and I moved in. I think we'd remember something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh... Joey using those acting skills. See ya. <laughs> Tell me this works, please, please. Goodbye, you fruit drying psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> that, that place, it wasn't really. I mean, this is... He missed you. He missed you. Welcome home, man. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> They're both so happy. That's so cool. <laughs> Everything is right in the world. Yeah, it's a cantaloupe. <laughs> Just roll with it. Uh, I hope Eddie comes back, though. This thing out every time Ross comes over. He paid a lot of money for it. I'm gonna hold him a different way. <laughs> Thing going over there, but now without the other ones, it just looks tacky. <laughs> How strangers are gonna leave little bathroom tiles all over the place? <laughs> Stay! Good fake dog. 
What you guys doing? Monica's making us watch old Yeller. Oh, what a classic. It is sad, though. Yeller, it's a happy movie. Uh, have you seen Old Yeller? Family gets a dog. Frontier fun. I mean, that's part of it. That's when my mother would shut off the TV and say the end. <laughs> he doesn't have rabies, he has babies. <laughs> that's what my mom said. Oh, Phoebe's parents and stuff are always lying to her. I want you to see what's about to happen. What? What's about to happen? No, I've don't watch now. Before. Don't watch now. It's so sad. Put that gun. Oh, so sad. He's, he's your buddy. He's your yeller. No. No, no. The end. The end. <laughs> okay, what kind of a sick doggy snuff film is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I haven't thought about that movie. I haven't seen that for so, so long. But now that I actually have dogs... Just thinking about that scene, it's different. Not to rant too much about owning dogs, but I every scene with dogs in movies is very, very different now that I have dogs. Chicken and potatoes. What am I wearing? <laughs> what? Really nothing but rubber gloves. <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys really fell for that. Really. Now one of these times you're going to really be naked and we're not going to come over. <laughs> A leg, three breasts, and a wing. Well, how do you find clothes that fit? <laughs> she set herself up for that. Yeah, Ross can't go, so it's between my friend Eric Prower, who has breath issues. Oh. And... Then not him, sorry. With the poking. Did you see that play? <laughs> do you want some more beer? Find another option. Hey, why don't you ask Richard? Yeah, exactly. If you had an extra ticket to the Knicks game... <laughs> oh, no, no, oh my gosh, Joey, no. Between a friend who smelled... Oh, and... gosh. Who would you pick? Wow. I would choose the bruising, personally. Huge Knicks fan myself. I think you should take someone who's a huge Knicks fan. <laughs> Good answer. That's Eric. <laughs> oh my gosh, come on. Come on, Rich. Take him. What? I don't know. They don't like him. She's really nice and everything. Uh, it's just that we don't know him really well, you know? And plus he's... This know, is the old. chance to get... Oh, come on. Who cares? Than some people. <laughs> but uh, younger than some buildings. <laughs> okay, you're allowed to insult anything if you're that clever. No, if you ask him, he might take you on his jag. That's a bonus, right? Come on. We'll bring him. But only if he takes the Jaguar. <laughs> That's definitely not the line, but it's okay. Almost had it. <laughs> he pulled himself up. Standing man. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I love how excited he is. We know. He already did it last week. I missed, I missed the first time of everything. I him yet? Uh, is he driving? Does he have a favorite <laughs> liqueur? <laughs> For a whole weekend. No, listen, I mean, I feel like... Great, that would be great. <laughs> nice. I mean, I, I had a whole speech prepared. <laughs> that would have been fun. <laughs> Do you see? He just waved. He just waved. He's never waved before. You've Was that a wave? Yes, he has. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, though. Ross is going to be able to spend more time with his son, right? Love story, Brian's song, in terms of endearment. Have I seen any of those? No. To not show us the ends of sad movies. To shield us from the pain and sadness. Before she killed herself. <laughs> well, she was trying. Where's Richard? Did you ditch him? Yeah, right after we stole his lunch money and gave him a wedgie. <laughs> Don't you guys have fun? Your boyfriend is so cool. Oh, great, great. Jaguar, Joy for 12 bucks, me for 15. Wow. <laughs> not to brag, not to brag. You never even saw the money. It was like this. Hey, Chandler, thanks for showing us to our seats. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's very smooth. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chandler. I think they get it. <laughs> hey, yeah. you're getting better. <laughs> I'm going to keep this, by the way. <laughs> you kept my dollar. <laughs> yeah. They're a little behind the times in Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> Bye. We Bye love mommy. you. Bye, we love Hopefully everything goes well with this babysitting, right? Ross. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Joey, do you know we can see you from here? <laughs> 
you'd look so much cooler with one of these than me. I'll light it and lose the spatula? <laughs> that would help. Per se, just not unlike them. <laughs> oh my gosh, come on, that's great. <laughs> Monica's like, what did I do? What did I do? This formerly known as Chandler. <laughs> Trying something here, you know. Honestly, it doesn't look bad, right? I grow a mustache. Oh, can't. we flipped for it. I got the cigar, he got the mustache. Oh, okay. Both blue. We look like dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really sidestepped that landmine. <laughs> Didn't know that you were the guys. You hear that? We're the guys. Your plan, your plan worked too well, Monica. Yes, doesn't Chandler remind you of Aunt Sylvia? Thank you. <laughs> Aunt Sylvia, poor Aunt Sylvia. It's Ben and his dada, dada. Come on, come on. Oh. Look, I'm gonna tell you mommies, you said it anyway, so you might as well try. <laughs> a while ago, I got a sa out of him, which I thought, you know, might turn into secondary caregiver, but. <laughs> Don't get too ambitious. This off. Oh, yeah, there sure, is. okay. <laughs> Why is she holding him like that? <laughs> Honestly, that'd probably be me. Uh, I'm holding Ben. <laughs> well, he's a baby, not a bomb. Well, just hold him like you'd hold a football. This is how I would hold a football. <laughs> I'm sure you'll feel totally different when it's our baby. What? Dang, really? Actually, I kind of think that we'll have, we'll have two babies. Yeah, hey, he's like ready. He's ready to commit. Uh, th then what's going to happen? want to raise kids in the city, so we'll probably move to uh, Scarsdale. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and yes, I know the taxes are a little higher than, let's say, Nassau County, but... He's really thought this through. Wow. <laughs> I think it's pretty cute that he did that. Oh, look at that. I don't have a pot. <laughs> <laughs> or in Scarsdale. Hey, is that a door? You're just leaving in the middle of your shift. Oh, Rachel, hope you don't get fired. Murder, cancer, soccer teams eating each other in the Andes. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening to the world? I mean, E.T. E. leaves and, and Rocky loses, Charlotte <laughs> dies. Charlotte who? Charlotte's web, right? Web, the spider, she dies. She dies. I got those last references. Hey, welcome home from the hospital, thud. <laughs> you want to feel better? Yeah. Okay. Wait till you watch Hereditary. It's a wonderful life. Yes, I've heard of this. Bring your nerves of steel. <laughs> Don't worry. I like hanging out with those guys. It's fun for me. They're all getting along. You don't start sentences with, you know who just died shoveling snow? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he's not even that old, man. <laughs> go Vassar. Uh, they're not in it. Okay, then just go. Okay. <laughs> Why does this bother me so much? Oh, come on, come on. He doesn't have that much free time, you know, and I, I don't know, what do I do? Does it matter? You're ultimately just gonna die or get divorced or have to blow your pet's head off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ugh, Phoebe, oh, Phoebe. Richard made plans again with the guys? Yeah, well, Ross just made plans for the whole century. <laughs> I'm gonna go to my room and read Cosmo. Maybe there's something helpful in there. At least maybe I can learn how to do an at-home bikini wax with leftover Christmas candles. Is that what's in Cosmo? One minute I'm holding Ben like a football, the next thing I know I've got two kids, I'm living in Scarsdale complaining about the taxes. <laughs> As you have planned out the next 20 years of our lives, we've been dating for six He's weeks. just thinking about the future a little bit. Do not think about what our children's names are going to be. You know what our children's <laughs> names are going to be. Of course he does. And I thought, I thought that might be good. Emily's a nice name. The big book of children's names. I'm sorry if that scares you, but if you want to be with me, you're going to have to deal with that. Fine. Thank you. We're not done. I didn't know that. <laughs> guy who's not going to stop planning his future with you because he knows we're going to end up together. Fine, I will. Good, because I love you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I love you, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I'm going to kiss you. Well, you better. <laughs> Oh, that was really sweet. I like that. That's the best fight on TV. Oh, thanks for the great movie tip. Yeah, did you like it? Oh, yeah. But don't you think the ending was pretty wonderful? I didn't watch the ending. You I have to. You have to. The ending is great. It's a sucky life. And just when you think <laughs> I can't suck anymore, it does. <coughs> it's a sucky life. Oh, my gosh. Make that movie. Could that shot be any prettier? <laughs> 
got a table in college. Oh, really? I didn't know they had foosball in the 1800s. <laughs> By the way, when puberty hits, that thing's really going to kick in. <laughs> See, he can play. He can hang with the boys. Let's be real. Not to sound too Florence Henderson, but dinner's on the table. Okay, just one more point. Not to sound too what? Florence who? <laughs> They're good for each other. They're good for each other. <sighs> See, that's why we don't let her play. <laughs> Are they all right? Mm -hmm. No. Uh-oh. He's smart enough, see? He's been around. He is so much cooler than our dads. <laughs> ow, 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 what are you kicking me for? <laughs> trying to talk him. <laughs> Joey, oh my gosh, really? See me as a dad? Oh yeah, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> too late, too late. When we say dad, we mean buddy. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 seriously, I, Joey's my dad. <laughs> Monica's my dad. <laughs> I'll just see you kids around. 99. You're not a dad. You're not a... <laughs> can't believe you got us into trouble. <laughs> I feel like I'm about 100. I thought I was just one of the guys. Well, that sucks. He's hurt by that, you know? I'll make you feel like one of the guys. You know, for a really cool guy, you suck at foosball. I was killing him. Yeah, well, they suck, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're not all at your level, Monica. Ross, just so you know, calling it a poopy diaper doesn't make this process any cuter. <laughs> yes, we can. There! I did it! Nice. Stays on and everything. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, no way. No way. I'm sorry. What did you just say? What the word, hi? Yeah, no, my uncle, hi. <laughs> Great, and I missed that too. I oh, you were right there. Sorry, I guess I just bring it out in him. <laughs> ben just said his first word. <gasps> what did he say? Something about hi. <laughs> hi? You know, actually, it's more like, hi. Yeah, she's giving them the parenting tips. You tell them, Rachel. Hi. Hi. Uh, okay, this could Hi. go on for a while. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Bye, Ben. Bye. Dang. Dang. He said bye. He said bye. Oh, you oh, said, he said oh, bye to me. God. He said bye to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. Oh. That's cool, he got to share that with Rachel, too. Where Ernie buries Bert in the sand and can't find him, and he does find him again. So don't worry, you won't be traumatized. And there's just the alphabet, but we know that ends well, so. <laughs> he was here just a moment ago. Oh no, my old friend Bert is lost. Oh, baby, don't get too worried. All right, so that is Friends, season two, episodes 19 and 20. Uh... <laughs> Eddie, first the crazy roommates. We continued that storyline, and he will be missed because, like Phoebe was saying, it's like as even Phoebe, you know, that's how you can tell he was eccentric and scary in a good way. Is the fact that Phoebe was kind of warming up to Eddie as the good psychotic roommate, and I've said it multiple times during the reactions with. Uh, that character, but I just want to mention it again because it's such a standout. I thought that actor did such a good, comedic, crazy, you know, scary performance. Just added a nice flavor, as many of the kind of guest stars throughout this show so far have done. But I would like to see Eddie come back in some capacity. And like I said, you know, kind of like the character, you know, the stalker after Joey, you know, I also really liked her. She That was a really funny episode, but... Um, that was great. That was great to have Eddie, and it was smart, you know, how Chandler eventually got rid of him because you had to kind of outthink him in his own way, I think, to get rid of Eddie for good. And I would honestly, if I was Chandler, I mean, I know it's kind of a comedic situation, but if you have someone like that, that's, oh, they know where you live. It's, it's always a little bit uh, nerve wracking in that sense. Are you ever fully safe? I don't know. But it's cool. It's cool we got Joey back, and, you know, that. That storyline is, it's a bit sad because I feel bad for Joey, you know, his career not going as well, getting fired, you know, struggling as an actor. But, you know, that's that's the reality of that kind of life. And what I really liked about that storyline, you know, uh, 
I, I think that the struggle that Joey had to kind of admit to himself that the place where he was at, you know, just because you get one break as an actor doesn't mean you fully made it, doesn't mean that you don't want to take smaller parts, you know. But I think emotionally that's very understandable, you know, if you had a bigger role in a show. And you can connect this to any type of career, really. It doesn't have to be just acting. But if you have something where there's some status and some money and you feel good about yourself, then to take something that feels lower or lesser, even if it makes sense, is a little bit difficult to do, you know. So I get where Joey's coming from. But what I really loved is how Ross handled that whole situation. You know, first of all, I think his advice was very sound to Joey. But then I give him even more credit coming back to Joey and being being like, look, I don't live your type of life. I have a different type of personality. You know, you are being ambitious and going for it and taking these type of risks that is not for me. But, you know, to kind of have that perspective to step back and be like, this is not right for me, but it might be right for you. I think that's kind of difficult for some people to do. So for Ross to do that and to be so understanding and then to like buy the the dog furniture back for Joey. It's just such a cool thing for Ross to do. And then it was kind of a funny uh, like B storyline with the self-help book that <laughs> for women about wins and powers and all that terminology. You know, I thought that was a fun kind of, sorry about my dogs. I thought that was a fun uh, parody of those types of self-improvement things, you know, and just <laughs> how some of the language can be a little bit funny and stuff like that. But then for this, for episode 20, you know, I, I thought that it was cool. You know, we have Richard hanging out with Chandler and Joey, which is kind of a natural progression with friends, right? You have a serious boyfriend of one of the core crew, and then it's only natural for there to kind of be a boys' night out, for them to go out. And, you know, I, I think that... It once again kind of continues that conversation of age that we kind of saw in the earlier episodes, like with Monica specifically, of like the age gap between dating. But there's also that age gap between friends as well. And I don't know, maybe I don't think that's ever been something that I've thought of too much. You know, I feel like I have hanged out with people who are older than me by quite a bit and had a great time. Maybe I'm an old soul or maybe that's just I'm more open-minded than some people, but that's never, I mean, I don't think Rich, like I get it. If it's a grandpa or something, I guess technically Richard is a grandpa, but you know, I, if it's someone who's like feeble and, you know, wrapping themselves in blankets and stuff like that, doesn't want to go out, doesn't have energy, then it's like your wants are different. Your interests are different. But if it's just someone who is an older age and you're going to the game with them, like, I, do, I just, I, that, there's never been an issue for me, but maybe it's like that for other people, you know, uh, maybe that's just a difference in my personality or my, you know, personal experiences with that. Um, but I thought it was really cool how it kind of went the opposite direction, I thought. I thought maybe there would be a little bit of awkwardness or it'd be difficult, like, Monica has a good boyfriend, but does he fit in with her friends? But it was the opposite. He fit in maybe a little bit too well. And Monica's like, oh, shoot, now you're spending too much time with my other friends. And that was kind of a funny subversion that I didn't expect. Um, but then it kind of, it was a little bit bittersweet. You know, I think Monica was happy, you know, at the end when Richard came back. But Richard seemed hurt. He seemed hurt when uh, Joey let it slip that he and Chandler kind of looked at him as like a father they never had, which I guess... I might relate to that a little bit more. You know, I, there is something about if you hang out with someone who's older than you and is really cool, you know, you do learn things from them. So I guess in that sense, maybe it's like looking up to them like a father. But, I mean, come on, they're, the, the way they're playing foosball and hanging out, like, you seem like one of the boys. No, I don't know. But I, I'll be interested to see if they kind of continue that. You know, I hope that Richard continues to be in the show because he seems like such a great partner for Monica like they seem really so happy together the more I see of them and he just seems like a really cool guy like I mean just look at how easily he fit in with, with Joey and Chandler but not only that I thought it was really cool there are a few moments in this episode where he kind of showed a level of maturity and understanding for maybe younger people's immaturity um you know like uh Joey and Chandler were kind of doing some things like trying to look like him and He's very good-natured and relaxed about it. You know, he doesn't tease them like, oh, you guys look like dorks. You're trying to look like me because you think I'm cool. You know, he's just, he rolls with it. I like that kind of vibe in someone. Yeah, but I, I don't know because I I feel like he's, something's going to happen though because I, I've never heard of his character. 
you know, kind of like Julie with Ross. Part of the reason I didn't think they were going to last is I didn't, I had never heard of Julie. So will Richard be around long term? I don't know. I hope there's not a heartbreak situation or something, though, with him and Monica, because that could be rough. Poor Monica. And then the, the we had some some interesting moments with Ross and Rachel, you know, and that also felt felt very realistic you know it felt so in character of ross that of course he's thought ahead about them having a family and having kids and what they would name them and where to live and what the tax rates are like that's such a ross thing to do it's 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 funny writing but i love how a lot of the funny situations in writing reflect so perfectly the character traits that have been established in the show so far. It's just very consistent, you know, like, and believable, even though some of the uh, circumstances are obviously a bit ridiculous. But I, I liked how that ended up, you know. At first I was like, oh, I hope this isn't a, a real conflict between the two of them. But I think that, you know, Rachel, she's just like, oh, shoot, we don't want to plan too far ahead. You know, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. And I also understand that, you know. Um, but I like how they kind of had that fight at the end and they're like yelling, I love you at each other, you know, because that's really how they feel. You know, I thought that was kind of a sweet end. you know, really, really their their anger slash nervousness is really because they feel strongly for each other, at least in my mind. And so, you know, just like some before they got together, how they kind of had some arguments like in the episode where they lost Marcel and were looking for him and things were extra tense. I really think it's because there's a lot of strong feeling between the two of them that can sometimes be scary and just contributes to more powerful emotions in general. Um, but then it was another, it was just a sweet ending. It was really a sweet ending. You know, Ross hearing his son speak for the first time. And it reminded me of the episode, you know, there's there there are some heartfelt episodes and that was kind of a moment where it was just really sweet with ben you know saying hi and bye and you know the fact that they all got to share that together was pretty cool and then i have to mention it because even though it wasn't a main storyline in this episode it was hilarious with phoebe where you know her mom would shut off movies before she got to see the sad endings i mean as someone who grew up and oftentimes was not allowed to see all of the movies. I can definitely relate to that. I, I, I knew how old, I saw the end of Old Yeller. I, I, I knew, I know how that happened. But did Phoebe see Titanic? Does she know the ship sinks? I just, it's just such a, oh, Phoebe's parents really, their, their strategy was really to tell their kids that Santa Claus exists and never tell them that he's not real, right? That was just their style, the style of her mom's parenting to kind of keep information from her. But I do think it's hilarious that she shut off It's a Wonderful Life before the end. And, you know, I actually think it's very understandable because I haven't seen it in a long time, um, but there are some some sad parts for sure. I think the title can be misleading. I mean, I, I really like that movie, so it's not a knock against that film. It's one of my favorite throwback movies ever. But, you know, part of the reason I like it is actually is that things are not sugarcoated, you know? Like the part where he's talking about, you know, regretting having kids and things like that. It It goes all the way in that movie. So, Phoebe, I don't blame you for shutting it off early is what i'm trying to say basically but that was just a fun it was just a funny kind of side storyline i almost wish that had been more of the focus of this episode because we could have we could have gone down a whole you know a whole path of like films and when you turn them off and just i don't know I, i'm probably just interested in this because i love movies myself but that that could be a whole Thing that we that was focused on for even more time but yeah I had a really good time with those two episodes uh, if you have any thoughts for any of these scenarios I feel like there are a lot of different storylines going on in these ones and I don't even think I touched on everything but you know I, I guess if you have been in any of these similar circumstances and if you have any thoughts whether it's like crazy roommates or like reading self-help books and if they're cheesy or if they use some different language or if they're useful things like that and then the age thing with friends as well, you know, has, has anyone had an experience like that where they're hanging out with a group of friends and then someone's older and it's strange or you look at them as a parent or that just is a cause of some form of tension? I'd love to know 
if anyone has real life experience, you know, and things of that regard. But I hope you guys enjoyed these reactions. As always, of course, if you want to watch along the full reactions and future episodes, full reactions, that's all up on Patreon where you can support me and the channel. Thank you to everyone who does. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.